let's see. So let's go ahead and move forward here. I'm running out of time. <laughs> I apologize. A lot to talk about here. So last thing I wanted to get to before we end up is the uh, what's called the design exploration step. Um, so this is where everything pays off. This is where we can make some uh, parametric changes and uh, run the analysis. Again, if you make the changes on the NX side, um, all of the conditions that we've assigned, the meshing, um, that's all associative, so we'll all update. We don't have to redefine the analysis and remesh. <clears throat> um, we do have to resolve, of course, but we don't have to do a lot of the other upfront work. Um, also, what's cool about this is you can um, set up some parameters and have Flow EFD perform an optimization towards some target values that you might want to give it and then drive parameters back into um, the NX model for, for optimization. So we'll take a look at this here as our last step <clears throat> and see how this works. So we can do parametric studies and do several different kinds of analyses. Uh, you see there's there's a lot, lot of different ones in here that are available. Um, one that's commercially available is the multi-parameter optimization that is, uh, and it's called HEADS. I have to be honest with you, I don't know exactly what HEADS stands for, but it is a commercially available optimization method it's, that uh, has been incorporated into um, Flow EFD. So we're going to go ahead and run that. You can determine what parameters that you might want to use. So let's go ahead and select that. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to take a look at some expressions. So these are the values that we looked at before. Diameter, draft angle, and pitch. We can choose different parameters in the model and uh, add them to our analysis give it ranges, so we got minimum values and maximum values for the diameter, for the draft angle, and then for the <clears throat> pitch. And then for the output, we want to take a look at some of our goals. So these are some of the goals that we had set up earlier, and we want to take a look at uh, you know what which goals that we want to uh, track through the optimization and we'll set this up we want to do uh, of course minimize the heat minimize the pressure drop <clears throat> um, where do we want uh, the values to basically start so we'll set up an upper bound and then finally we'll go ahead and set up the uh, the the iteration so this is an iterative type of uh, type of uh, optimization. There's some uh, uh, standard algorithms for doing that. We can set up how many calculations that we want it to run through. <clears throat> and then go ahead and perform the, uh, the optimization. So naturally, this takes a little while. These are the results that we have. Um, so you can see it's gone through several different analyses and, and come up to uh, what it sees as the, the optimum values. So it actually plots them that you can review this, all the different iterations. <clears throat> and uh, so this is the um, heat flux versus the uh, pressure drop. And the one that we're interested in, uh, and there could be more than one. In this case, we've only got one. It's the green dot there. So if we take a look at that green dot. That's the optimum condition. Um, so we can take that, and if we go over here to, you can see the values, this is the optimum condition right here. We can actually feed that back into the assembly and have it update. So now we've got a much denser arrangement of pins. They have a, a, a slightly different draft angle. <clears throat> and if you take a close look, again, for those of you that are familiar with NX, um, it actually uh, did a save as. It copied the assembly. So now if you take a look at the assembly navigator, it says flow EFD optimum. So it, it didn't actually affect the original. It, it, it's created a new assembly that um, is, is a modification. So you still have to do your evaluation. It doesn't, it doesn't force itself back onto the original design. Um, you still have to, uh, to take a look at that and see if that is truly acceptable. But, um, but it does back drive the, uh, the, the 3D model, and it gives you that, uh, that answer. Okay, so that's the uh, the last thing I wanted to show you, um, and, and again, that's what makes it uh, very powerful with the NX integration. It not only does the analysis for you and gives you results, but it also lets you do what ifs. You can do uh, uh, parametric changes to the assembly, rerun the analysis, or 
or make use of some of the optimization tools that are within uh, within um, Flow EFD. <clears throat> so we've gone through uh, the this, this six major steps of, of using Flow EFD for, for CFD analysis. Um, hopefully with some of the benefits that, that we see here, you've been able to see how those benefits are uh, actually achieved when you're using Flow EFD with NX.